Hi everyone, welcome to this month's video of For the Love of Crafting and Sharing. If you haven't been here before, I'm Kiki. And today I'm going to be doing a layout um, of my husband and I. We're focusing on gratitude for the month of November. And so I'm going to be selecting um, some papers from my recent SCT sampler that I received in October and some other pieces from leftover sampler kits. And I wanted to show that in this particular video, you don't always have to keep your fall items for your fall photos. You can use them for other times as well. Um, this photo that I have of my husband and I, um, we were it was actually taken in the spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a stencil to uh, create some background interest in areas where I don't think I'm going to have papers and I'm using distress ink and forest moss on this because I think it sort of matches my husband's jacket a little bit and I'm just going to do a little bit of stenciling here and there. Um, I'm also using um, one of the cute pink and mane um, uh, stencil brushes. It's the mini one and I love it. I love it a lot. And I found this uh, purple polka dot that I'm going to be matting my photo on. And I really, um, I thought it would sort of offset. There's a floral photo that I, or a floral paper that I really want to use. And I needed to bring the purple in. And it just seemed to sort of make it a little bit more feminine. And um, so I wanted to play with that a bit. And so that's why I've got the purple. Now I've got the sort of mixture of papers and I'm working with a sketch from uh, Christine Davidson from Creating Creative Scrappers and I'm going to modify it a bit but I really love this tiny floral and it's kind of it's dark navy with purples and I'm there's a center strip and then some um, circular elements that, that are going to be on the page so I'm going to work with that and as you might have seen in the beginning I'm also going to be working with a tool from um, We Are Memories and it is the um, mini eight punch one of the mini eight punches that makes like doilies so stay tuned if you'd like to see how that works and if you haven't been here before and you're enjoying what you're seeing, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of my future videos. Also, the rest of the ladies are listed down below in the description box for the YouTube hop. So make sure that you check them out too because it's a really talented bunch of gals. So I'm kind of, I'm stuck with these papers. I shouldn't say stuck. I love them. What I'm stuck with is not knowing what side I want to show because with the um, mini eight punch, it actually uses an entire six by six sheet. And so let me show you how it works. I've decided that I'm definitely using this green as opposed to the yellow floral on the back because I already have a small floral. And in order to balance the page, I'm gonna make sure that um, I'm gonna use either a larger floral or a larger type of um, element to the paper. So, um, I'm just going to line up the paper because I know where I want it to go. I had originally thought I was going to put it more on the right, but I'm actually going to put it um, on the left hand side a little bit, just off center. I don't want it to be centered perfectly. And I'm using my um, square ruler here just to make sure that I get the same distance on both sides of the paper from the top to the bottom. And it doesn't matter that the pattern doesn't match because the um, the doilies that I'm going to create and things like that are going to cover it. So, so here's how the mini eight punch works. You use a six by six. It will tell you how many inches the paper has to be on the top. And so you line it up against the edge and you punch and it creates these funny end pieces. But what you need to do is flip it over and then line up the edges of the papers um, to this the straight edge and also the circular part you line that up to the bottom it's really easy to do and then you just repunch on the other side of the paper and it creates this beautiful sort of doily style paper and I know a lot of people use doilies and things but sometimes you have a, um, a gorgeous piece of paper and you want to use it but you want it to be like a circular element and have you know, more than just a circle of paper. That's why I really love um, this particular punch. So I'm gonna use it twice. And I love this um, paper, but what I did, you'll notice like I pointed to it a little bit. Um, 
there's, I made a mistake on it and I had to repunch it, but I'm not too worried about it. I, one corner didn't go in far enough, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use this particular paper because I love the word, wording on it. It says blessed, um, blessings, things like that, but it does have this sort of area where there's a mistake on the paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I cover it with an embellishment and that will um, cover my mistake, um, but it doesn't stray from the sketch either. So I'm really pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to put down these particular um, papers because I know I'm not going to tuck anything underneath them. Um, so I'm going to put them down right away. And then I'm going to work on the embellishments a bit. And I kind of, with the, the diamond shape paper there, I kind of have it wonky because I don't want it to seem you know, to straighten things, um, the embellishments are going to distract from that anyhow. So you'll see how that'll all work out. Um, and the reason that I moved the straight paper over was be was primarily because when I used that um, stencil, the ink came out stronger than I had originally an anticipated. So I wanted to move it over a bit to because I only wanted touches of that color on the white background. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull out embellishments from the various kits. Most of them are coming from the October SCT sampler, um, but some are left over from September, August. Um, so I'm going to use what I can. And the reason I scrapbooked this particular picture for gratitude is because um, when I think of gratitude or things that I'm thankful for, it's my husband primarily because where my husband is, is, is where my home is. And, um, no matter where we've lived, we've moved around quite a bit in our, um, years of marriage, but wherever we move, it's still, it's home, not because of the house, not because of the surroundings and our things, but it's home because of him. And so I thought it was really appropriate to use these, um, home elements and um and the picture of us the two of us because we really um we really are blessed even if we don't have a lot um and we're separated from our families um it it just makes you know he's kind of my haven i come home and i know that everything's going to be okay so i know that sounds corny but um it is the way our family works so so I wanted to uh, make sure that I gave this uh, photo a really kind of um, special layout. So I've pulled out a variety of die cuts um, and some of them have gold accents. So I'm going to bring in some more gold later, uh, but I'm just going to play around a little bit with uh, the placement of things. I love this little teapot. My husband and I have tea a lot. He makes homemade chai and he's always... Um, giving me some lovely homemade chai to drink. And so it's kind of cute too. So I thought it was kind of appropriate there. And I love flowers. So I'm not going to throw on a lot of like, um, how should I say it? Uh, heavy flowers, like, you know, dimensional ones. Um, but I am going to throw in um, some different areas. So this particular sheet, I'm cutting apart these foam stickers um, because I want to be able to move them around like they're die cuts rather than just kind of stick, have to stick them down right on the paper. And um, so that's a tip for you if you want, you know, you want to play with placement and you're not quite sure where you want things and they're on a, uh, an acetate sheet, just cut the, the acetate sheet apart so that you can move things around like they're die cuts and then you know um, how you want the placement to go. So um, I really love this particular collection. Um, I can't remember, quite remember who did this um, particular one. Let me just see if I can find it here. So this is the Cozy Days collection uh, for the most part. It also, this SCT sampler also came with Doodlebug design and I don't do a lot of Doodlebug stuff. I mean, my husband and I don't have children. We have pets and things. So if I do anything with the Doodlebugs, it'll probably be with my pets. Um, but for this, I wanted these, you know, really um, gorgeous colors. There's going to be lots of colors on this um, for sure, but they're all, they all work together. And um, so that's what I'm going to be doing with this. I thought originally that I would do this gold home or maybe put the heart down and then embellish on top of that. So I'm, you'll see I'll play with that. But I love all these little stickers um, with leaves 
and that comes uh, from the Cozy Days collection. But this sticker sheet, as you can see when I'm pulling them off, it's really thin and I don't want them to go down on stickers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back them onto some white cardstock. So this is just plain eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And these stickers have a white border around them anyhow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fussy cut them and with some border and the sticker will help that because of the border that it's got around it already. Um, I'm not usually one that likes fussy cutting, let me tell you. Um, and I think if you've watched my channel, you know that I'm not happy with fussy cutting. I'm trying to get better at it, but, um, but for now I'll work with it. <laughs> so I love this, um, blessed, this big word that came with the, uh, foam sticker sheet and the grateful banner underneath it. And so that's going to be my title is blessed and grateful. And so I'm going to move, I'm going to add some of these die cuts. There's this cute fox. I, I just love it. And the fox has like, it's a female fox, obviously, because it's got flowers on it. So I'm going to embellish the title down at the bottom a little bit with some of these things that I've cut out. And these tiny, these flowers were really tiny for cutting out. So I'm really proud of myself for having done some fussy cutting um, with these. And I love the little hedgehog. The little hedgehog is adorable. Um, I might even get one in the future. You never know. <laughs> so um, do you have any fussy cutting tips? Do you like fussy cutting? Um, cause I know a lot of people really love fussy cutting. They will sit down and they will fussy cut in front of the TV and things. And I watched a video recently by Laura Albert. So I'll see if I can, um, link to the, um, video in my description box, but, um, she had some fussy cutting tips. She did an entire video on how she does fussy cutting. And it was from her video that I learned that if you angle your scissors, on an angle rather than straight up and down in your hand that you'll actually be able to see better what you're cutting and that helped so much um, especially with these really tiny flowers so thank you Laura for that tip that was that was awesome and so I'm just going to play around with these different ones um, I tend to do clusters that aren't too big aren't too many layers where just about everything can be seen some people cluster um, just for some kind some depth but you you sort of lose looking at what exactly it is that's underneath there but it does provide some different depth and things um but i'm going to keep this relatively flat i think and i was originally thinking like i said that i would put that heart down there um but i'm really i'm not going to i think i'm going to stick with the wording actually that says heart and home and you'll see that in a bit so do you have any other fussy cutting tips when do you do your fussy cutting um do you do it like all at once. Um, if you know that you have a sheet of paper that is just going to be like fussy cut flowers or something like that. Um, I know some, that's what some people do. Um, I have heard, um, different people, um, that have said that they're going, they use their scan and cut like by brother or the silhouette, uh, pick scan sheet to actually, um, scan in the paper and then cut out, have the silhouette cut out the pieces. I'm going to give that a shot. And um, if I do, I will make sure to put it in a, into a video. So stay tuned for that. Because uh, I think I can manage that, especially when it's like a page full of flowers and you want to get the bay, you know, most bang for your buck. Um, so I think I'm going to try that in the future. And now for a lot of these embellishments, I am going to use um, some these are 3L, I think they are, or 3D foam squares by, um, by Scrapbook Adhesives. And I've run out of my white ones, so I have to stick to my black ones now. And they're, um, they're pretty high. Some of them I've had in the past that are um, a thinner one, thinner foam, but I wanted these to have some dimension. And you'll see that I don't use a lot of them, but I didn't use one on this home sticker. And I decided I was gonna layer it over top of the photo. Um, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the photo and I'm going to put down the elements that I know that are going to come under the photo. So for this, uh, I'm going for my orange fun foam. Um, I got it from Amazon, I think for a package of, uh, about 16 or 20 sheets, um, uh, really cheap. And, uh, it's got an adhesive side to it. And then I use my Scotch quick dry, uh, adhesive or tacky glue, whichever you have. Um, and that gives me some wiggle room to sort of get it straight, get it lined up where I want it. And, um, and I'm able to pull it up if I need to. 
So I really love that glue. And as well, I got a needlepoint cap for it recently so that it doesn't, um, I don't use too much of it. And then the advantage of the needle cap is that because you don't put a lot of glue on, you're not going to get that um, paper buckling because of the glue being wet. So I put down the uh, home. Uh, home is where the heart is. And um, the thing is, is that I don't like it. It went, went on to the photo and I want it overlapping the photo, but I should have cut part of it off. So you're going to see me fiddle around with that a bit. Um, you know, we're not all perfect scrapbookers. Um, I'm certainly not. <laughs> um, if you've been to my channel before, you know that I like things perfectly imperfect. That doesn't mean that I like mistakes though. Um, I like mistakes that turn into happy things, but, um, but that one isn't, um, a mistake that turns into something happy. I do end up making it work though. So, so don't get discouraged if you make mistakes, just work through it and see if you can, um, you know, maybe you can embellish over top of it. Maybe you can pull it up and place it down again in a different way or with a different adhesive. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, and then you don't get too concerned about you know, everything looking perfect. Uh, because it's when you're starting out scrapbooking, everything is not perfect for sure. Um, I started in scrapbooking on the digital side of things. And so for me, that was um, a real advantage because I could mess, sort of mess things up, mess up the look of a page and then just move things around again. And nothing was really glued down permanent because it was all digital. Um, so that gave me an advantage in terms of getting started with placement and things like that and being able to really hone my skills that way. Um, not that I'm perfect by any means or any um, stretch of the imagination. Um, but yeah, so, you know, if you play around with things, if they're on acetate or if they're die cuts, you know, play around with them for a while. And then that way, um, you know, you can just get comfortable. And once you have a placement, a friend of mine gave me a tip um, that once you have things down the way that you like them take a digital photograph of it um, so that when you remove things you could um, you have something to reference later or if you're like missy uh, wyden or widen um, she's on several design teams and i watch her videos and what she does is when she has the placement where she likes it she just uses the needle tip um, glue dispenser to and she lifts things up very gently to glue them down in spot sometimes I do that sometimes I don't um so yeah and I really love these little leaves and things I love the colors of this kit particularly because they're not what you would typically think of for fall like there's grays in it there's purples in it there's peaches for sure like I mean everybody thinks of you know falls and oranges and yellows and things um but I just I really kind of enjoyed working with this and, and working with this kit so um and as I said, the sampler is just, the sampler for October was amazing. I can't wait to get the one for November. Um, but a lot, because it's, they were sort of fall themed with some new products that came out on the market, um, the ones for August, September, October, they all sort of go together. And you can work with them um, with a whole bunch of different kits. So uh, be sure to check them out. I'll leave you a link below in the description box as well. So I decided I'm going to work with that title that says uh, Heart and Home. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing um, of me putting down letters. And um, so it's been a really kind of strange fall. Um, I know a lot of people are thinking about the pandemic these days and how they're managing it. And uh, if you're like me, um, you're at home. Um, you don't have a lot of family around, but you do have, you know, your immediate family and you're finding comfort with being with them. And uh, so I hope that you're all staying safe and that you're happy and enjoying this time um, to reflect on what's really important to us, because um, I think that's what gratitude is all about is I read a quote once that said, um, gratitude turns what we have into enough. And I think that really says something. Um, we're such a consumer society, but um, we sometimes forget that we should appreciate the things that we have and not try to just build, build, build. Um, so I hope that that's um, at what you're doing this month as well. It's reflecting on the blessings that you have rather than the worries 
of um, what's going on outside in the in the world because um, you know worry is such a I don't know it's it to me is kind of like a useless emotion because either we can do something about it or or we can't um, and a lot of what's going on around us uh, we're pretty powerless in terms of being able to get rid of the pandemic or um, make other people do things um, that uh, we were doing to protect our family. So, you know, it's just it's just better to focus on positive, focus on what your family has and what you have, and do your best to stay safe in this time um, of pandemic for sure, because it, it really is an uncertain time. Um, so I think that's why November's gratitude is really um, this, this particular theme really spoke to me. So I also found this little journaling, uh, spot and I'm going to uh, journal on here about my husband and I walking. This was a, as I said, it was an early spring photo. Uh, this was one of the first outings that we did after the pandemic hit. Um, and, uh, we took a little beach walk. It was cold, um, but cold and gray and, there were little bits of blue cloud uh, peeking out. And so we just enjoyed our, each other's company. And, you know, the pandemic has kind of been a blessing for that is it's made us slow down. Um, it's made us be more aware of our impact on each other and um, also our love for each other and how we can get through this if we're together. And um, so I hope that's what uh, what you think about as well during this time. So I'm going to glue that down into that spot. I left a little spot because the flowers are going to layer over top of it. Originally, I thought it might go um, into underneath, just poking out underneath the, uh, the photo there, but I decided not to. And I'm still looking through different things, but I am going to add my trusty Heidi Swap Color Shine Spray in Gold. And... Um, I don't know why that is, but my Heidi Swap has been, as I've been using it more and more, it's getting really liquidy. And so you'll see, like, as I pull it out of the bottle, there's like real drops, like real splats. Um, and for some reason, they just, um, they have gold in them, but they just don't seem to, it doesn't seem to be as thick as it used to be. Let's put it that way. Not that it is really thick, but um, so I'm going to use a little bit of tissue and um, just blot up some of the wetness because I don't want the paper to buckle there. And that's the only thing that I don't like about working with uh, shine sprays. A lot of scrapbookers will work with acrylic paint that they've watered down a little bit to get it to splatter, or they might use a toothbrush or something like that. I just pull it out and, and tap um, the end of the uh, sprayer to get it onto my page. But as I said, sometimes it just, you know, comes out too quickly. So, um, so I just dab it up and, you know, our little happy accidents happen. The gold still stays on the paper, but the water all comes up. So it's not a problem for me. So I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you will um, go into the description box and take a look at the layouts um, that the other ladies have done. And here are some of the um, uh, highlights of the layout for you. And if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and stay tuned for my next video. And of course, I really appreciate you and being I hope here. That you 